What's going on there guys? It's the Earthmaster here on this Sunday, August 14th date, 2022, about 2.31 p.m. California time. The latest quake shows a 2.5 into the Northern California area. That is that earthquake shown up here on the Petrolia Seismograph Station here on the bottom left side. This activity following another large earthquake around the South uh, Southeast Loyalty Islands area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here from the USGS map showing basically day number two of some super active conditions out here along the plate tectonics. All right, so earlier this morning, we had a, a pretty large earthquake around the Kermadec Trench. A 6.6 .6 originally came in as a 6.8, downgraded just a little bit by the USGS there to a 6.6 .6 at 39 kilometers. That's gonna be this earthquake right here. Uh, but now, what do we got? Some further adjustment going on here around the Loyalty Islands area with a 6.2 coming in at 82 kilometers deep. Okay, if you've been paying attention here, we've seen a broad scale earthquake activity event take place here along the Western portions of the Pacific plate and also around the Philippine plate here. Uh, seen quite a bit of movement kicking up here in the five range all up and down the board yesterday. Today, we are seeing some adjustment uh, kicking up here around the southwestern portion of the Pacific plate here. And that kind of makes sense there. We've seen a broad scale push of activity uh, basically within this section right here around the Philippine plate uh, all through Papua New Guinea. So all that activity, right? Uh, the Pacific plate is a big one. It's a big Pacific. It's a big plate. But when you get this much movement like we've seen yesterday uh, and uh, the night before, it kind of started that night, uh, not last night, but the night before, uh, it only makes sense to see the adjustments down here and up here. But so far, we have not seen any sufficient large-scale activity up here around the Curl Kamachaka Trench. It's the only portion here along the western portions of the plate of the Pacific plate and of course uh, we did have some activity here along the western portion of the Philippine plate but all, all that kind of goes hand in hand here with the general plate dynamics the movement of the plates so to speak to the northwest let me show you guys here real quick see if I can pop this up here uh, let me show you guys real quick here uh, there's a couple different images that I like to use there's this one here from the uh, geology hub here physical geology it's pretty pretty simple pretty basic map of the direction of the plates i kind of like to show this one off a lot because the pacific plate p plays a major part in uh what goes on here along the west coast around uh, california up through alaska uh nazca plate and whatnot but the majority of the action is around these arrows that are pointing towards each other right you got the subduction zone up here uh, off the coast of Japan, the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, a major player. You got the subduction zone here, the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Trench, and some other subduction zones where we're seeing that earthquake activity right now around the Loyalty Islands. All this as a whole, see these long arrows indicating general movement. So this whole Pacific plate, northwest direction. And you got a lot of plate movement here from the Eurasia plate. The Philippine plate right here, right? This is still heading towards the northwest. A lot of this is just squeezing uh, and building up quite a bit of pressure here in the region. But now that we've seen this activity, it only makes sense to see the adjustments accordingly uh, following all that broad scale activity we've seen up around the western portion of the Philippine plate through Papua New Guinea. And we did have a little activity and actually we had a little deep movement up here into the Sea of Osk region. That's uh, into the... Uh, Kind of into the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Let me bring that up and see if I can uh, find that. Uh, it's a pretty deep one. This one kicked off, uh, yeah, I believe this is the one, 5.3, 384 kilometers. But notice, this is the last seven days of activity, 4.5 and above. There's all that broad scale activity here around the Philippine plate. And there's some smaller ones in here as well, up around this region of Manila. Uh, this is only showing 4.5 and above. But notice here, we have not seen any sufficient large-scale adjustment here along the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, except for that deep earthquake. And I think that deep earthquake, uh, if, it, if you think about a subduction zone there, all that's doing is building further pressure along with the general plate pressure here of the Pacific Plate 
and the subduction zone it's only increasing along this area so i would be on guard like like you wouldn't believe around this area it's been all too quiet there considering all this movement that we've seen today yesterday elsewhere around the pacific plate it only makes sense here to see the next possibly uh, a much larger quake in this area okay so 6.2 the latest quake here on the map at the loyal southeast of the loyalty islands area since then uh, as I noted here on the beginning of this update, we've seen some automatic adjustment kicking up here along the uh, areas of Northern California. Now this is a Cascadia subduction zone. We've been watching this area as well, uh, but notice that we haven't seen too much in terms of uh, movement like we had seen. Let me bring up the seven days all magnitude without crashing the computer. Let's see, there we go. Uh, this is over the last week. Um, showing that activity all up and down uh, the uh, area around the Cascadia. Of course, this dark red line here indicating the um, subduction zone itself. It does extend underneath the North American plate an extensive level. Uh, the further across the map you go, so to speak, here with my pointer, uh, the deeper it would get far as that plate being shoved underneath the North American section here. Uh, so we've seen all this activity off the coast into the Gorda uh, um ridges here blanco fracture zone even seen one just back before the cascadia here which we don't see too often uh, kind of some back building there a 3.9 uh, again just about it looks like about 20 miles or so right before the cascadia so all this activity took place prior prior to the 6.1 that kicked off in the philippines area which uh, it got downgraded to a uh, 5.2 uh, was it a 5.8? Seven days. Has it been? Has it, I, I lose track of time here. Has it been already already two days? I guess so. That's right. So 5.8 uh, originally came in as a 6.1. Okay, so prior to this, we hadn't hadn't even seen anything over here. If you guys remember, watch my updates. It's been all too quiet up and down the uh, Pacific Plate and the Philippine Plate. And very active here along the Cascadia, just like that map I just showed you a little bit ago. All the activity around the Cascadia. Well, since that 5.8, the 6.1 struck in the Philippines, it has triggered a broad scale event like we've seen yesterday and today with numerous fives and uh, now a couple sixes out there. So uh, definitely some brewing up, so to speak, of some major unrest um, continuing today along this area of the Pacific plate. Uh, again, I think we do need to watch these quiet zones. Uh, the plate movement here kind of gives you a general indication of when one section of the plate moves, you got to remember, right? It, it's it's kind of like floating, well, kind of floating on lava, magma, right? Not lava, but on a liquid type surface, not surface, but liquid, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You guys get it. It's simple plate tectonics here. Uh, these things are kind of floating abroad, so to speak the plates themselves and uh so you think about this when you get a whole bunch of movement here heading to the west it makes sense to see these areas light up like we're seeing right now uh, in these areas down south and these areas in the north but this is about the only area up here that we haven't seen any major adjustment so keep your eyes on that folks pretty closely uh, i don't think we are done with the activity yet whatsoever uh, now, the activity there that kicked off on the North American uh, plate here off the coast, well, in, inland, uh, but still along the Cascadia, and I say that because it's 20 kilometers deep down into this subduction zone called the Cascadia Subduction Zone, 2.5 at 20 uh, kilometers. We did see that adjustment take place immediately uh, following this 6.2. So, um, I still think... Uh, it still just kind of leads me to believe here that we're still watching potentially the West Coast for some movement. Although, um, it's somewhat tapered down in this area, but it's, it's hard to say right now if this is going to kick back up. Let's take a look at the general activity here along the West Coast. Uh, of course, movement around the Calpine hydrothermal operations there, the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, better known as the geysers. But there is no geysers out there. Actually, there is none. Uh, look it up if you don't believe me. Uh, one earthquake here outside of the San Francisco Zoo. Ooh, all right. Uh, 1.2 at 12 kilometers. 
and some spotty activity throughout the eastern portion of Sierra Nevada and some movement down south here uh, just off the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault although this activity older much older movement so it, realistically we haven't seen too much activity along the west coast because of all the activity that's been uh, pushing over here to the west it's that teeter-totter effect a little relief for the North American plate but uh, I'm, I'm still watching that Cascadia you know sometimes these uh, these events way far away thousands of miles can trigger something much bigger in an area that could be uh, built up such as the Cascadia it's been 322 years since the rupture along this area so any kind of plate adjustment even if it's thousands of miles away can have an adverse effect a domino effect so to speak anywhere around the plate boundary so that's something to watch pretty closely considering all this movement that's kicking up here so just heads up folks pretty active down south of australia uh, along the antarctic plate here the plate boundary uh 4.9 and near the uh looks like west of Quarry Island, 10 kilometers there for that earthquake. Pretty shallow movement. Um, over here further west, a little activity. It looks like it is stretching up. This one kicked up. See, this This just goes hand in hand with the pressure movement, folks. Still seeing some activity, right, down south here. Uh, and if you think about it, that still makes a little bit of adjustment up here um, along the western Pacific plate here and the Philippine plate. But I, uh, with all the activity we've seen yesterday, um, who knows if we're going to see a halt here or if it's going to increase in magnitude. But this earthquake up here in China occurred just merely minutes following the 6.2. Just goes to show you the westward kind of displacement here of the pressure. As, as noted here, notice this here, choop, right up in here. Uh, so 4.8 uh, showing up there on the map. And when was this earthquake here? South America. Looks like that one was pretty darn deep. 168 kilometers for a 4.5. Um, 2059. That one occurring just moments before uh, the activity there in the um, Loyalty Islands area. So a lot of movement, a lot of pressure kind of shuffling around throughout this whole area and the adjacent plates as noted here with the nazca <clears throat> the cocoa plate not the cocoa's plate not a whole lot going on through this region right now um but it is in there the middle america trench does play a major part here in producing some earthquakes uh but for now 4.5 into the chile area um yeah i think we definitely need to watch this area as well just everywhere right now things are all over the place very very active Let's see here. What we got up here along the Aleutian Trench? A little activity, it looks like, a 5.2. This one occurring much earlier this morning, it looks like, um, quite a few hours ago, about six hours ago. Uh, not too much going on, as, as I noted, across the rest of the country, of the states there. Let's check out the Yellowstone overview here real quick, and then we'll move on. A couple small earthquakes here. Uh, looks like a very well-defined earthquake uh, in this area of Yellowstone National Park earlier this morning. Uh, I'm not for sure if, uh, let me bring up this map here and see if it's noted on the USGS map here. And it doesn't look like they have anything listed here for today. So uh, they'll get to it tomorrow, right? I'm sure they will. But little activity, a little bit of microquakes kicking up here around the northwestern corner of the park. Uh, Earthquakes Canada, been watching those folks too, but I, I don't know. Do they even do they even report on the weekends? I don't think so because there's still some activity. It looks like from a couple days ago, nothing. Tell me nothing has happened up here throughout Canada uh, all weekend. Yeah, I, I kind of find that hard to believe. So I don't know if they report on the weekends or not. But uh, USGS not really reporting anything. Earthquakes Canada, um, you know, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. All right, uh, let's see. Let's check out the space weather event real quick. Uh, looks like um, a Type 2 radio emission uh, began Sunday, August 14th. It looks like earlier, an hour or so ago. It looks like elevated wind conditions there, around 591 km per second. Uh, and that looks like it could possibly uh, peak up a little bit of some uh, geomagnetic unrest, but I don't see it popping up here. Uh, they show it listed here, but I don't see it affecting the KP index here. Let me see what Solar Ham has on their website. See if I can track down what they're 
what they're after. I'm not really seeing anything. Raw data. See what we got. Elevated speed conditions? No, I don't see it. So I'm not for sure exactly what uh, they're referring to. I don't know if it was a um, uh, a, uh, a mistake on their part on space weather. But uh, I don't see any elevated conditions here of the uh, solar wind stream. Everything looks pretty neutral, calm. Uh, and of course that will show on the KP index there, which is pretty minimal. The aurora forecast, very uh, thin. Not, not looking likely at all for any type of uh, storm or storming uh, over the next couple days. Uh, if anything, I think we do need to watch this coronal hole. It is growing and it is stretching pretty far uh, across the sun's surface here. And this will provide us with some elevated conditions. Uh, probably in two or three days, we'll, we'll watch that pretty closely. Also, the uh, sunspot activity has increased along with a little bit of complex magnetic fields kicking off here around 3081 3076 uh, quite a few of them are looking a little bit active in terms of maybe producing an m flare this one's growing pretty nicely uh, i watched that one grow overnight uh, since the update last night and man that thing's growing so we'll watch that pretty closely 25 percent chance of an m flare 90 percent chance for a c flare and x flare remains at about five percent chance as you look at the solar flare det uh, detection chart here we're popping, folks. We're popping with some sea popcorn out there. Um, and even today as well, getting into the sea uh, category. All right, guys, stay safe out there. Uh, we did have a winner in our members only drawing. Uh, it's a way of us um, kind of giving back to the members that want to uh, support the channel here. You know, they support us and we support them. So I only think it's fair to give um and whatnot here on the channel i'm not a big fan of just take 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 uh, i don't like that type of demeanor so we like to give stuff away not everyone's interested in it and that's okay that's your choice uh, but for the folks that are we're gonna make sure we welcome them and uh, treat our members here on the channel and everyone for that matter uh with respect and uh you know try to give everyone a good chance of winning some prizes out here uh, whether it's uh, you know a gift card or or rocks from Mount Shasta or Mount Lassen, you know, um, eventually we will be giving away some geology type stuff and uh, who knows what? Maybe a little mining kit. We'll see how that goes over the next couple months or so. But either way, congratulations to Nancy uh, Kozowski. There we go. I'll spit that out on being the lucky member winner today. Uh, there is the S flare, or not S flares, but. Uh, P waves kicking up here around Japan. You can see that showing up from that uh, 6.2 that just came in uh, to the Loyalty Islands area. Also showing up on the um, uh, Barrett station right there. Let me see. It's coming up around the bend right here. Uh, after the BC station right here. Notice these waves kicking up. Some surface waves from that earthquake kicking off uh, moments later but it's got to travel, you know, through a lot of stuff throughout the globe here. So or through the flat scale map, however you want to look at it. But uh, eventually those large earthquakes do, uh, you know, kind of ring around the globe. And that's why I say it could definitely trigger uh, some distant earthquakes there. Not only these S waves and P waves, but uh, potentially just the adjustment itself. I've seen it happen all too often, folks here watching the earthquakes throughout the years. All right, guys, stay safe. Have a good day. We'll chat at you a little bit later tonight. Uh, unrest continues. Be alert and stay on guard. Peace out.